Subscribe our channel for latest news updates. Breaking news. New Dem presidential hopeful for 2020 has just stepped forward. Must be stopped. This is a joke, right? 2020 promises to be an exciting year. We would be foolish to think that the left didn't intend to finish what they started in 2016 and do whatever it takes to take the White House back over to continue their agenda. The only question now is which political puppet will get the full backing of the Democratic National Convention to try and oust President Trump. Republicans do have a few distinct advantages. The first being that an incumbent has an edge on any race that they are running, plus this incumbent is wise to the dirty tricks that the other side is willing to play to win the election. Another advantage that President Trump has is that he now has a political history. When he ran the last time, all he could do is promise what he would do in office, and we had to take his word for it. That's a stressful situation to be in, because politics are tricky, and it's hard to say how the political cookie will crumble when there's no history to look back on. President Trump will be able to point to his history in office, and we can see what promises were followed through on. The biggest, and possibly scariest advantage that Republicans have is that the left is going to be hard-pressed to find a Democrat with good name recognition that isn't also as dirty as the day is long, to run against him. The Daily Wire reports that the most recent gen that is considering a presidential bid has more than your average dose of DNC dirt, to the point of being held in contempt of Congress. Former Attorney General Eric Holder, the only cabinet member in U.S. history to be held in contempt of Congress, is contemplating a run for the presidency in 2020. Holder, asked the question of a prospective presidential run by reporters at a media breakfast sponsored by the Christian Science Monitor, responded, You know, I'll see. I'm focused on NDRC at this point. I think I'll make a decision by the end of the year about whether there's another chapter holder, who is currently supervising Barack Obama's National Democratic Redistricting Committee, NDRC, said he plans to canvass the country about changing House district lines in roughly 20 states. Holder attacked President Trump and the GOP, asserting that their attacks could raise questions in a layperson's head about the way the FBI is doing its job. I would hope that the president would rethink the way in which he has attacked career people at the FBI, career people in the Justice Department, career people in our intelligence community, and think about ways in which he has spoken about his attorney general. How dare we raise questions about whether those on the government's payroll are doing their jobs? If you're a Republican and the FBI wants to stick it to you, then you just need to let them, so the people don't get concerned. It's curious that the only time a liberal has law enforcement's back is when the law enforcement happens to be in their back pocket. But Holder's opinions aren't just theoretical. He's put his words into actions when it comes to obstructing justice himself. That incident where he was held in contempt of Congress was for not giving them the documents that they demanded to sort out a big scandal that implicated someone he wanted to protect. In 2012, the House of Representatives voted to hold Holder in contempt of Congress over his failure to turn over documents related to the Fast and Furious scandal. As Daryl Issa, RCA, pointed out in 2014, when Obama's Department of Justice finally released thousands of documents related to Operation Fast and Furious that Obama had previously claimed were exempt from congressional review. When Eric Holder wants to know why he was the first attorney general held in criminal contempt of Congress, he can read the judge's order that compelled the production of 64,280 pages that he and President Obama illegitimately and illegally withheld from Congress. Holder's legacy includes his refusal to prosecute the new Black Panther Party for voter intimidation, his department monitoring Fox News James Rosen's phone calls and emails and his decision to try to lead Sheikh Mohammed, the planner of the September 11th attacks, and his co-defendants in federal court in New York instead of military tribunals in Guantanamo Bay. Maybe we should hope that the DNC wants to endorse someone like Holder to represent their party. He's probably an accurate representation of what they have to offer, 
and at least his dirty laundry is already out front. That's a problem that deplorables can efficiently deal with, and would make for a slam dunk for President Trump in his second term.